Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So in this video, I want to talk about computer screens once again, because I got a great question from Louis, one of my subscribers. And Louis says, one question that I have that nobody has ever answered yet, but, love, uh, but a lot have answered on similar questions within the topic, computer screen. <laughs> How does it affect the phantom center if it is behind or in front of the speakers? Is it better to have the monitor behind the speakers so it's not in the phantom center of both speakers? Thanks. I think this is a great question. So I want to go through what the screen, your computer monitor, actually does and how it affects the sound, how to think about it so you can place your screen properly on your desk and within your setup. Now, let me get this out of the way first. The initial and most important aspect to this is actually choosing the right screen size. And I made a video about that that I'll link in the card right now. But in a nutshell, it's about placing your speakers first in order to get a proper stereo image and a proper phantom center, and then choosing a screen size that fits within that space. And by the way, if you need help with this, let's say you're setting up a new room or you're just not happy with the sound from your speakers, maybe you've got trouble kind of hearing depth and setting reverbs, that's a telltale sign that your speakers aren't set up properly, then I've got a free workshop for you. It's the Phantom Speaker Test Workshop. This is my guide how to place your desk and your speakers in your room correctly, no matter what room you're in. In it, I walk you through the exact steps that you need to take to figure out where to place your setup in your room, how to place your desk, how to set up your speakers, how to get the right distance between the speakers and the walls, how to make sure that you really get a proper sound stage, a proper phantom center. That is really the core of what you need in order to mix properly, reliably, pan instruments, set reverbs, set delays, balance all your instruments. So if you need help with that, if you want to make sure that you re are really getting everything out of your room and speakers, make sure you start by setting up your speakers correctly with the help of my free phantom speaker test workshop that you can subscribe to at the link in the description. So then once you have a computer screen that is properly suited in size for your setup, the first thing that I want you to understand is that the phantom center is a psychoacoustic effect. Right? It doesn't actually exist in reality. And so you can't really place your screen in the phantom center because it's the brain that creates the phantom center, both from the direct sound from your speakers and then all the energy that gets reflected back to your ear from your room within kind of the first 20 to 30 milliseconds, very roughly speaking. And then so depending on the relative timing of all that energy, the levels, so the kind of the volume at which they arrive at your ear, of course, the direction from which they come, and also the frequency content of that energy. From all that, our brain does something <laughs> and then creates what we hear as stereo. So really the question of how the computer monitor, the screen affects the stereo image is a question of how it affects the direction, the level, the timing, and the frequency content of all the energy that gets to your ear within those first 20 to 30 milliseconds. And as you can imagine, for a, like a, a concrete answer, a very specific answer, my guess is as good as yours. Very generally speaking, though, flat screens don't have a huge impact on the sound. And that's because kind of no matter where you place it, the angles are just wrong in order to kind of properly reflect a lot of energy back to your ear. The surface area of the screen is also too small. OK, so you got to remember that sound waves only see objects that are roughly the size of their wavelength. And so with a typical 32 inch monitor, that's around 80 centimeters, only frequencies upwards of around 400 Hertz can actually potentially see the monitor and interact with it. And if we look at how the dispersion character of a speaker changes upwards of 400 Hertz, let me just show this to you. This is the website, the Atom Audio website, and I just pulled up the A7V because it's such a popular speaker. And 
The great thing about Atom Audio is that they publish all this measurement data. So let me just open this real quick. And so obviously I scrolled down to where I needed to go first uh, already. But if we just scroll down to these horizontal isobars, these show us the dispersion character of the A7V in the horizontal plane. So what we're seeing here is on the bottom axis frequency and then on the vertical axis, the angle. And these colors indicate energy. So each step in color is a drop in three decibels. So let's have a look at 400 Hertz, 100, 200, 300, 400. So that's around here. So we can see at 400 Hertz at around, what is that, 70 degrees? off axis, we're already down by three decibels. By 120 degrees, we're already down six decibels. And this only gets narrower the higher up in frequency you go. So depending on where the screen sits relative to your speaker, the speaker might not actually play any information, any sound, any energy in the direction of the screen at a frequency at which, which that energy could interact with the screen. But let's go through the three main scenarios at which we could place our screen, right? So we could place our screen in front of our speakers, at least kind of in front of the line connecting the speakers. Again, ideally, you should have picked a, a screen in size that fits between your speakers. You don't want to be covering up your speakers, ideally, although a little bit is fine. But even then, if we place our screen in front of the center line between our speakers, any sound that comes from the speaker and potentially hits the screen will, first of all, reflect back in the, di the direction of the front wall at a very kind of shallow angle, even possibly into the side wall, really. And there, from there, it could potentially then reflect back to the listening position. Or of course, if you've got absorption there, that sound will simply be absorbed. Yeah? So in any case, that reflection will probably not cause any problems by the time it comes back to your ear. So the next scenario is with the screen right in between the speakers. And of course, here now the angles are completely wrong. Any energy that emanates from the speaker basically only sees kind of the side of our flat screen. That surface area is so small that any energy reflecting off of it is in the very high frequencies, thousands of hertz. Yeah, it's definitely not going to be an issue. And if we place the screen behind the speakers, it's pretty much the same, right? Any energy coming from the speaker that can potentially interact with the screen directly is at such a low frequency because of the dispersion character of the speaker that it won't really interact with the screen at all. So coming back to the original question, whether to place the screen in front or behind the speakers, the answer really is don't worry about it too much. What I want you to worry about is the speaker placement and then figuring out the right size for your screen. Once you figure that out, it doesn't really matter all that much where your place where you place your screen but if you can place it between or behind your speakers and of course also kind of lowering it down getting that angle of the screen shallower should also potentially minimize any remaining effects and then if you want to be really nitpicky test it right i'm always in favor of experimenting with acoustics yeah you can't break anything don't worry you will just learn something new that you can then over time integrate into what you know and understand about your room and the sound from your speakers. So if you want to, test it. Play some music, play some pink noise. If you've signed up to the Phantom Speaker Test, there's a section in there that will guide you through actually uh, setting the cent Phantom Center properly with pink noise. You can use that same sound to test what the Phantom Speaker sounds like and then maybe place a heavy blanket over your screen and see what changes. And that will tell you whether the impact of the screen is significant enough for you to make the effort of actually changing anything. All right, I hope that answers this question. As always, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.